when you use Gauss's law, you want to always do the following. Always take advantage of symmetry so that the E value is the same everywhere. On your Gaussian surface. The point of this is to take E out of the integral. And if you're doing complex integrations, uh, for uh, to figure out uh, like what the e dot da is, you're not doing it right. The the reason that we are actually going to be doing some uh, difficult integrations is to figure out what q in is. That's where the tough integrations come in. Figuring out what the q inside this thing is. Just to understand what we're doing here, you place the Gaussian surface exactly where you want to find the e field. So you put your Gaussian surface right there, wherever you want to find the E field. And again, the Gaussian surface, there's nothing there. You just place a geometric construction there, just an, uh, you know, an idea, a sphere or a cylinder, uh, sometimes a box. You will place it wherever or a surface. You want to place that Gaussian surface where you want to find the field. And then you want to choose the Gaussian surface. Choose the Gaussian surface and what shape you're going to use so that you get one or more of these. The following. You want choice one, you want E to be uh, at least the magnitude, not necessarily the direction. E magnitude constant or over the surface. Uh, and then, so you typically, you argue uh, by symmetry. Uh, for example, if we're looking at uh, this situation right here, you can argue that the E field is the same everywhere on the surface of this sphere because no matter where you look, no matter where you stand on the sphere, the Gaussian sphere, this whole situation looks the same. It looks identical if you're standing over here or if you're standing over here. doesn't matter where you're standing. This situation looks exactly the same. So you argue that by symmetry. It looks the same everywhere, no matter where you stand. That means the E field's got to be the same everywhere on that surface. We're going to try to make it such that E dotted on DA is just equal to E DA. That will be when the angle between the E field vector and our little teensy weensy area DA vector is going to be what? Zero. We're shooting very, very often for a situation where the angle between E and DA is zero. Here's the E, the red. DA is that way too. There's DA. So notice that E and DA, they're, the angle between them is zero. So that E dot DA will just be E times DA. Basically, you just want a situation where theta is equal to zero between E and DA. In other words, the E vector and DA vectors are parallel. Uh, another situation that we're shooting for as a possibility is where you could have it such that e dot da is equal to zero. And that would be when the, uh, how are the uh, e field and the uh, da vector lined up so that this will be equal to zero. It'll be perpendicular. This is when theta equals 90 degrees uh, between uh, e and da. Basically, you'd have e like this and a da vector something like this, DA. Uh, so we, for those situations, we don't have to count it. So basically, and if you can work this out, we don't count any flux for those services. And so if you can eliminate a whole service, okay, there's no flux through that service, cool. We don't have to worry about that in our integral. Uh, another situation we could uh, shoot for would be if you can argue uh, that the field is equal to zero over an entire surface or part of a surface. If you can argue that, then it's really easy uh, to do your integral too. You can say, okay, it's just zero. Uh, if it's zero everywhere, when you integrate over that part of the surface or that surface, you get zero for the flux. Sweet. Now, next, we're actually going to use Gauss's law to figure out the field of a point charge.